हाय एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज अनूप सिंह यू आर वाचिंग एरोटेक एडवांस यूट्यूब चैनल इन टुडे वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी चैप्टर नंबर टू दैट इज वेट वेट एस्टिमेशन वेट एस्टिमेशन इज अ इनिशियल परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर और एस्टिमेशन बिफोर डिजाइनिंग द एयरक्राफ्ट सो टूडे इज अवर फर्स्ट लेक्चर लेक्चर नंबर वन सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी फर्स्ट वॉट इज द सिलेबस ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर टू दैट इज वेस्ट वेट एस्टिमेशन सो लेट सी सो हियर आई हैव मैंशन द सिलेबस ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर टू दैट इज वेट एस्टिमेशन सो लेट सी वॉज द टॉपिक इज देर द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज इंट्रोडक्शन सो फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ वेट एस्टिमेशन देन वी आर गोइंग टू सी द सेकेंड टॉपिक दैट इज डिपेंडेंसी ऑफ airplane performance on airplane parameters and uh, atmospheric characteristics so in that dependency performance we are going to see the very important airplane par parameters and atmospheric characteristics that is steady level flight in that steady level flight we are going to see related to maximum speed flight speed then we are going to see steady climb in that case we are going to find out maximum rate of climb then we are going to see absolute ceiling then range and endurance of for airplanes with engine propeller combination and with jet engine so there will be a combination we are going to see to see the range and endurance parameter of airplane for propeller engine aircraft and jet engine aircraft and then we are going to see the turning flight then take off distance then landing distance so this is the syllabus and the rema rela remaining remaining syllabus if you see here that is drag puller of a typical high subsonic jet airplane drag puller of a typical turboprop engine then drag puller of a typical low subsonic general aviation airplane with fixed landing gear and then we are going to see the introduction to estimation of vsfc then propeller efficiency and tsfc that is brake specific fuel consumption and thrust specific fuel consumption so don't worry we are going to see in detail then bsfc and propeller efficiency of a typical piston engine airplane and then we are going to see the bsfc and uh, propeller efficiency of a typical turbo prop engine then we are going to see the thrust specific fuel consumption that is tsfc of a typical turbo fan engine and then fuel fraction for a de descent landing and taxiing performance and then last one is fuel fraction for a mission so guys this is the total syllabus of chapter number 2 that is a weight estimation and weight estimation is very important chapter in aircraft design because without discussion or without uh, deciding the weight uh, estimation we can't design the aircraft so let's see we are going to see the first lecture but not all the topic we are going to see in first lecture we are going to complete few of the topics and then we are going to see the next lecture so guys the first we are going to start with introduction so introduction of uh, weight estimation is uh, i have given some uh, uh, theory here so the students are going to understand otherwise i can explain directly so maybe students are not going to understand that's the reason i have mentioned few theory related to introduction so let's see here the ac accurate estimation of the weight of the airplane is required for the design of the airplane and this is arrived at in various stage understand different different stages of the de, uh, of the aircraft design the weight estimation is required to understand the weight of different different component during the designing and the procedure to obtain the first uh, estimate of the gross weight was indicated and this was based on the ratio of the payload to the gross weight of the similar airplane see guys gross weight means overall weight of the aircraft it's include fuel weight plus empty weight of the aircraft so this 
एस्टिमेट ऑफ द ग्रॉस वेट इज रीडिफाइन इन दिस चैप्टर एंड बाई एस्टिमेटिंग द फ्यूल फ्रैक्शन दैट इज वेट ऑफ द फ्यूल रिक्वायर्ड बाय द प्रपोज मिशन ऑफ द एयरप्लेन डिवाइडिंग बाय द ग्रॉस वेट दैट इज कॉल्ड दैट इज कॉल्ड ग्रॉस वेट एंड एस्टिमेटिंग द फ्यूल फ्रैक्शन एंड देन एमटी वेट एमटी वेट फ्रैक्शन इट मीन्स दैट एमटी वेट ऑफ द एयरप्लेन डिवाइडेड बाय ग्रॉस वेट so that is called empty weight so again i am repeating the fuel fraction and empty weight is very important for calculating the weight estimation so this is about introduction i hope so you guys are understand the introductory part because in introductory part only mentioned related to gross weight and related to what is the definition and what is the parameter related to fuel fraction and empty weight fraction so let's see the next topic that is dif uh, dependency of airplane performance on airplane parameters and atmospheric characteristics so let's see was the airplane dependency is there on air cap par parameters so let's see the uh, airplane parameters and atmospheric characteristics actually the airplane performance parameters like maximum speed maximum rate of climb ceiling parameter range endurance and rate of turn take off distance and landing distance that is a airplane parameters that depend up, depend upon on the weight of the airplane area of the wing drag polar thrust to power available fuel weight etc so this is the uh, airplane parameter in which uh, airplane performance is depended understand and atmospheric characteristics is also there in which airplane performance is depended so this everything here all these parameter we are going to see in detail so let's see the first one that is steady level flight maximum flight speed so that is the first parameter maximum flight speed so if you see in this diagram so the force acting on the in this figure the force acting on the airplane is given and the velocity vector in the steady level flight you can understand with the help of this uh, figure the equation of the motion in the standard notation for the flight i am applying the equilibrium equation so i am going to get t minus d is equal to 0 and l minus w is equal to 0 nothing but we already know what is the lift equation and what is the drag equation we know lift is equal to half rho v square scl and drag is equal to half rho v square scd and we already know the thrust required that is equal to drag see the steady level condition is thrust is equal to drag and lift is equal to weight this is a steady level flight and in that case we in in this case we are determining what is the maximum flight speed condition so this is let's see what is the derivation is there in the case to find out maximum flight speed so further we knows that drag polar is parabolic and we know the equation drag polar equation that is cd is equal to cd not plus kcl square understand profile drag plus induced drag profile drag is cd not plus kcl square kcl square is the induced drag so we already know t is equal to d but what's the parameter that is thrust requirement so we know thrust required is equal to drag so i am defining thrust required is equal to drag that is half rho v square into cd and what is the cd that is cd not plus kcl square so i am putting all the values here or we can also derive the mathematical equation of the thrust required that is t r is equal to half rho v square s in the bracket cd not plus k plus uh, under root w upon half rho v square whole square means this the value is uh, cl value understand and i am solving this whole equation i am solving this whole equation i am getting this very short equation that is half rho v square s cd not plus k w square upon rho v square so that is a thrust required equation 3.2 understand and uh, how i am going to find out power required power required the equation is power required is equal to thrust required into into velocity that is a air speed i am dividing by 100 because i am converting in the terms of watt 
so here i am going to put the value of thrust and velocity so i am getting in the form of in in is equal to 1 by 2000 rho v square as cd plus kw square upon 500 rho v square so this is a mathematical equation of thrust required and power required and the thrust required and power required depends upon the wing loading w by s is the wing loading density and the drag polar drag polar is this one cd is equal to cd not plus which represent the characterized by the cd not plus k in the equation of 3.2 understand and 3.2a and it is represent that the power required and thrust required is the function of wing loading density of the density at particular altitude and drag polar so in this way you can understand flight speed is the function or uh, is the very important role to determining the thrust available and power available let's see for derivation that further further at the maximum speed further at the maximum speed at the thrust required equal and the thrust available is also equal to the power available so try to understand here i here i already mentioned very cle clearly that a v maximum condition means v max condition at that point your thrust required and the thrust available is equal understand thrust required is equal and thrust available and power required is equal to the power available uh, here i am going to write out so you guys are understand thrust available and power available that both are is equal to power required at which condition at the condition of v maximum means maximum flight condition hence we can find out v maximum is the function of weight of the overall weight of the aircraft that is a gross weight then wing loading then thrust to weight ratio then drag polar and density so in this way you can defining was the maximum speed condition and how it is depended upon the airplane parameter performance parameter that is weight wing loading uh, weight to power ratio or weight to thrust ratio and the density and drag polar understand so this is very important to understand because many of the time students are confused sir maximum speed is is the function of which parameter which uh, airplane performance parameter so this is a performance parameter guys and this is a affecting on the performance of the airplane that's the reason there will be a dependency of the airplane performance on the airplane parameters so i hope so you guys are understand related to the maximum speed nothing is difficult whatever i mentioned here is very simple language and simple mathematical equation okay let's see the next topic that is a steady climb so guys steady climb is very very simple topic that we are defining a very simple equation guys here you guys already done about the steady climb or rate of climb in your aircraft performance so let's see the figure shows the force acting on an airplane and velocity vector in the steady climb so with the help of this figure you guys are understand how the velocity vector is look like suppose i am applying the equation equilibrium equation so i am getting t minus d t minus w sin gamma gamma is the climb angle guys understand climb angle and l minus w into cos gamma is equal to 0 so there is a two equation here with the help of equilibrium equation so let's see how it is going to work so in this case the equation of the motion we already obtained with the help of a force diagram that is t minus d minus w sin gamma is equal to 0 and l minus w cos gamma is equal to 0 so that is a equation number 1 and equation number 2 so with the help of that was the thing is defining with the help of that we can defining rate of climb that is v sin gamma but what is the sin gamma sin gamma you can see with the help of this equation 1 and 2 that is t minus t upon w understand so rate of climb is equal to v into t minus d upon w so very simple equation rate of climb but if the drag in the climb 
approximate as equal to the drag in the level flight means state and level this is a condition always remember so i know rate of climb is equal to t minus d upon w so i am going to take inside and i am defining in the terms of power so power available is t minus v and power required is d minus v understand so with the help of that we can easily understand in the terms of power required and power available so let's see the next <coughs> hence rate of climb is proportional to the axis power understand if you see the previous slide the rate of climb here if you see the rate of climb here that is rate of climb i am going to write down that is power available minus power required up, upon weight understand so here rate of climb is directly proportional to the axis power what is axis power guys axis power is power available minus power required that is called axis power understand so that is proportional to the axis power so let's see for piston engine aircraft what is happen in the piston engine aircraft the maximum rate of climb is equal to approximately equal to minimum power velocity where the vmp is the velocity correspond to the minimum power understand in the level flight if you see for jet engine the ratio of the maximum rate of climb to the minimum drag velocity is greater than unity that is the opposite of the piston engine understand and it's depend upon the thrust to weight ratio if the thrust to weight ratio is high so obviously the ratio of rate of climb to the minimum is high understand and here velocity related to the minimum drag condition is correspond to the minimum drag at the level flight so i hope so you guys are understand is very simple concept and very straight forward nothing is there but at the last point try to understand the maximum rate of climb for a jet engine expressed as rate of climb is the function see for the jet engine okay there is a two case i am taken jet engine and propeller engine so jet engine rate of climb in the case of jet engine rate of climb the is the function of weight wing loading and thrust to thrust to weight ratio and drag puller but in the case of the propeller engine aircraft if you see it the rate of maximum rate of climb is the function of weight wing loading weight to power available ratio guys here thrust available to weight ratio but here weight per uh, weight upon power available and then drag puller so this is only the difference is in uh, in case of rate maximum rate of climb condition for jet engine and piston engine aircraft so this is about i hope so you guys are understand the different different condition of maximum rate of climb for jet engine aircraft and propeller engine aircraft condition now we are going to see the absolute ceiling so guys absolute ceiling is very important guys absolute ceiling actually is a height at a, at which height aircraft is perform related to defining related to rate of climb so let's see first i'm going to give some idea absolute uh, ceiling from the engine characteristics if you know it is known that the thrust horse power available and the thrust available decreases with altitude that is a very common factor what you guys are learn in the air car performance again i am repeating in the air car performance you are learned thrust horse power available thp suppose i am going to write here thp thp thrust horse power available and thrust available both are decreases both are decreases with increase of the height understand and this is very important parameter at the chosen altitude the thrust horse power thp this one required and thrust required are minimum at the flight speed and which decided by the drag puller of the airplane this is always keep in mind that how that play important role when thrust horse power required and thrust required are minimum at the flight speed it is highest at different level of flight condition so let's see the some derivation what i have mentioned at if you see here at h max 
at h max that is a uh, engine thrust available is equal to the minimum thrust required in the level flight that is a condition i have mentioned here so this is a height guys this is a ceiling height h max is the maximum ceiling height understand maximum ceiling h max so h max is equal to thrust horsepower available that is thrust horsepower available is equal to power required minimum or you can say thrust available is equal to thrust required minimum this is a condition you should always remember in the level flight condition for absolute absolute ceiling understand so if you see for performance analysis there will be a given in the in this chapter it is known that thrust required and thrust available in the level flight occur respectively respectively at cl and correspond to the cl minimum drag condition and cl for max minimum power condition so with respect to that how i am going to derive minimum power condition minimum drag condition and minimum power condition so obviously there will be a derivation at minimum drag condition and minimum power condition with the help of that we are getting the relation that is cl by cd minimum is equal to 2 under root cd not and for minimum power condition that is different that is cd by cl raised to 3 by 2 minimum is equal to 256 upon 27 cd not kcl square raised to 1 by 4 hence the t minimum is equal to w into cd by cl minimum is equal to 2w under root cd not into k so guys don't surprise how this is come and what i am explaining this you this you guys are already done in the air cup performance understand only try to understand the d minimum condition that is d minimum condition means minimum drag condition in minimum drag condition you know under root cd by uh, there will be a, uh, there will be a condition cd not uh, cd is equal to cl is equal to under root a by b and cd not is equal to 2a so that is implies here and we are getting the uh, cl by cd ratio at minimum drag condition and minimum power condition so nothing is there is very simple let's see the different one different uh, uh, derivations what we are defining at the absolute ceiling condition so here i mentioned the minimum thrust value and minimum thrust value is defining with the mathematical equation that is t minimum is equal to w into cd by cl minimum always remember this is a d minimum condition guys minimum drag condition and minimum drag condition l by cl by cd ratio is always minimum understand so all parameter like cl and cd that is always find under the minimum drag condition and what about the minimum power condition if you see in the minimum power condition cd not and k is given so cd not is always determined in the minimum power condition that is 4a what is 4a so don't confuse in the if you if you remember uh, you guys are learned that is drag polar cd is equal to a plus a plus bcl square what is a a is the cd naught and b kcl square understand so nothing is uh, uh, nothing is different every a is the profile drag and b bcl square is the induced drag so that we are using in the case of minimum power condition and minimum drag condition so hence the absolute ceiling depends upon the drag polar wing loading and variation of engine output with altitude so here it's very clear that how the absolute ceiling is depends upon the drag polar wing loading and variation of the engine output with the altitude because at the different different altitude output is different of the engine so this is about the <coughs> absolute ceiling so let's see the next topic that is range and endurance for airplane with engine propeller combination and with jet engine means in this in this case we are going to see the range and endurance dependency on the airplane performance but in case of two types of aircraft jet engine aircraft and propeller engine aircraft so let's see range and endurance the first case if you see for the a aircraft with the propeller combination so in first case we are going to see the range and endurance so here i have already given the range and endurance equation so try to understand this uh, range and endurance equation what is that 
so first i am going to give a little brief like based on the performance analysis the bracket formula this is a bracket formula what you guys are done in the air uh, air car performance the bracket formula for range and endurance is already given for this uh, uh, engine propeller combination in standard notation you can find out and range is, is given in the kilometer and endurance is always we are taking in hours understand so here is given the range uh, equation mathematical equation and endurance equation and in this equation you can try to understand eta p is the propeller efficiency and bsp is the uh, specific fuel consumption that is a uh, brake uh, uh, brake power specific fuel consumption with bhp in kilowatt root sigma is the density ratio and then sigma is the density ratio we are taken because compressibility effect at different different altitude and w1 and w2 is the weight initial weight and final weight at the starting of mission and ending of the mission understand so don't confuse what is w1 and w2 initial weight and final weight so this is the notation used in the equation bracket equation of the range and endurance so that is the equation if you uh, for uh, aircraft with propeller engine aircraft let's see for only jet aircraft engine with jet engine airplane with jet engine so range and endurance here also i have given equation very simple equation is given so let's try to understand the tsfc is the specific fuel consumption understand in the equation and every notation is same what we are seen in the case of propeller engine aircraft nothing is different here i am showing this bracket equation because try to understand which parameter in which parameter range and endurance is depend so range and endurance is clearly dependent if you i am going to tell you here if you see i have mentioned the range of jet engine is depend upon the bsfc eta p eta p is the uh uh propeller efficiency cl by cd max that is a the d minimum condition and w1 by w2 that is a weight ratio so here is very cleared that it's depend upon the range is depends upon the specific fuel consumption efficiency l by d ratio and weight ratio understand let's see the remaining one like jet engine range if you see the jet engine range is similar like what we are seen in the case of uh, propeller engine range okay in this case a tsfc and in that case a bsfc understand so don't confuse so in this case tsfc trust specific fuel consumption similarly you can see the remaining equation of a propeller engine aircraft for endurance equation for propeller engine aircraft and jet engine aircraft so guys here here i have given the mathematical equation because i want to clear in which parameter it's depend this is a uh, showing this this function is showing that uh, the range and endurance of jet engine aircraft and propeller engine aircraft is depend upon the specific fuel consumption l by d ratio in the terms of coefficient and uh, so you can also find out in some time of sigma that is a density ratio wing loading and weight ratio w1 by w2 you can find out easily this parameter is a airplane performance parameter and is always affecting the range and endurance parameter okay so this is about that let's see for next uh, para uh, point or topic that is turning performance so guys in turning performance we are going to see the radius of turn that is r minimum and maximum rate of turn that is a gamma max gamma max is the angle of the turn okay so uh, not gamma that is a psi so psi max is the rate of turn so if you see this is a fo the force diagram of the airplane is given and also given the vector uh, velocity vector in the turn so i am applying the equation of motion in the steady level flight coordinate turn so i got t minus d is equal to 0 t minus d is equal to 0 and l cos l cos phi is equal to see see guys phi is the banking angle understand during the turn the bank angle is staying so don't confuse the phi is the bank angle and psi is the turn angle understand this is a bank angle banking angle and this is a psi is the turn angle 
so here i have given some equation if you see that is uh, i am deriving with the help of velocity vector with the figure that l sin gamma equating both the equation so i am getting l sin gamma is equal to w by g v square by r here phi is the angle of bank as usual what i said and r is the radius of turn so radius of turn i know we you guys also know in the performance you guys already done that is r is equal to v omega understand omega is equal to v r you guys already know i am using this equation only and i am getting this v r is equal to v square upon g tan gamma this equation with the help of velocity vector on the previous diagram or previous picture and rate of turn that is psi is equal to g tan phi upon v so don't confuse this is i am here i am giving the mathematical equation that you guys already done in the airplane performance so don't confuse here i am showing because how this parameter is depended what is the function uh, of the airplane performance so let's see the remaining here i have given for uh, jet engine first is jet engine for jet engine rate of <coughs> turn is depend upon the thrust to weight ratio then efficiency then you can find out drag polar and cl max similarly you can find out for angle uh, uh, sorry uh, minimum rate of turn understand so minimum rate of turn uh, you can find out that is radius of the turn that is also function of thrust to weight ma maximum efficiency drag polar and cl max so this is about the jet engine what about the polar uh, propeller engine aircraft in that case is also similar you can find out in both of the case is similar only weight to thr weight upon th thrust horse power is given but in this case thrust uh, available upon weight is given so you can find out the comparison in both of the cases jet engine aircraft and propeller engine aircraft the uh, psi and r minimum means uh, the rate of maximum rate of turn and radius of the turn is the function of mostly uh, thrust to weight maximum efficiency drag polar and cl max condition so i hope so you guys are understand the remaining parameter the remaining uh, uh, parameter is left that is take off distance now the take off distance we are going to see the take off distance if you see here i have mentioned one figure very simple figure is given the first is the ground run and then unstick and then the aircraft is take the climb and then it take some height that is a flow away okay so this figure is shows the phase of the take off flight and it shows that the force diagram of the airplane during the ground run and suppose i am applying the steady state level equation during the motion of the aircraft during the ground run so t minus d minus mu r is equal to w by g into a this equation you guys already seen in the aircraft performance chapter so don't confuse and ground reaction is we already know r is equal to w minus l here mu is the coefficient of friction between the ground and tire of the airplane understand so let's see here the equation is very important what i need to explain the ground run equation we already know that is a, a, a take off distance in the terms of velocity in the terms of uh, thrust in the terms of drag and also weight and lift so here i am taking the k value that is near about 1.1 to 1.3 higher value of the velocity the longer in the take off run consequently for reducing the ground run we required a low we required a low wing loading and we required high thrust to weight ratio so try to understand guys suppose i want to reduce the ground roll during the take off condition i want to reduce the wing loading that is w by s and i want to increase my thrust to weight ratio that is t by w so that is required during the during the take off distance so this is about and uh, let's see in take off distance the for suppose i am going to see for jet engine so the take off distance for jet engine is a function of thrust available upon weight cl max pole drag polar wing loading and coefficient of friction between the ground and tire of the airplane so this is the uh, function 
of uh, takeoff distance in case of jet engine let's see for aircraft with uh, powered with uh, propeller engine in that case you can find out weight upon power available otherwise remaining is same so always repair, uh, remember in this way so it may be noted that the takeoff distance is generally prescribed at the sea level and hence rho is not included means we are not taken consideration for density of air because is operated at the sea level so that's the reason there is no compressibility effect or density effect we are taken understand so this is about take off distance now we are going to see about the landing distance so guys see first try to understand the uh, this figure try. the first is ground roll guys first is taking some height and uh, approach final approach is taking then there will be a flare distance then it's going to float but in this case airborne not touch to the ground but after that touch down it take the ground roll understand so this is the whole segment of a landing distance <coughs> so i hope so you understand the landing distance so guys this figure shows the different phases of the landing flight and landing distance an estimation of the landing distance is more complicated as compared to the take off distance however it depend on the square of the stalling speed in the landing configuration so that also we are going to see how it is depends the square of the stalling speed so in the landing distance guys if you see here the stalling speed what i have mentioned here see the however is depend on the square of the stalling speed in the landing configuration and the types of the tire system that's the reason i have mentioned here the stalling speed is given that is equal to v square is equal to w cl max thus for reducing the landing distance required we required low low wing loading and we required high value of cl max understand we required high value of cl max and grew and good braking system understand so in this way you can try uh, understand that how we are improve the landing performance so landing performance is the function of cl max wing loading and braking system so i hope so you guys are understand about the landing distance let's see the next topic that is a weight estimation and in weight estimation outline of the approach so let's see this outline approach we already discussed the weight estimation but good estimate of the gross weight is necessary for further process in the design process and different approaches to estimate the um, weight are presented is already in the equation what we have seen on the previous topic but the gross weight w not if you see here the gross weight this one w not w not the gross weight e is expressed as the sum of the weight of the crew weight and weight of the payload if you see here crew weight weight of the payload and weight of the fuel and weight of the empty weight understand so w not is equal to gross weight and payload weight and uh, if you uh, if you see the uh, the fuel weight and also plus the empty weight empty weight so this is the summation understand that is uh, that is very important outline uh, uh, of approach of weight estimation let's see the estimation of uh, empty weight fraction that is we by w not so that is also first uh, we are going to understand what is that in the previous topic we already there and in the uh, air cup performance is already mentioned few of the theoretical portion but here try to understand well, once you are going to plot we by w not once you guys are going to plot the graph we by w not the result graph you can f roughly find out straight line understand there is a straight line you can find out in the resulting curve and this suggests that this curve can be approximated by the equation of the type so which equation of the type this one we by w not is equal to a w not c understand w not is the take off gross weight take off gross weight 
and the quantity a and c depend upon the types of the airplane quantity a and c depend upon the type so here is very important we by w not is the mathematical equation to determine a by w not c a and c is the quantity depend upon the types of the airplane what is the type of jet engine aircraft or, or propeller engine aircraft depends but w not is the take off gross weight understand so in that way we are defining and there will be some numericals also or there will be a defining in very systematically manner related to empty weight fraction so with the help of numerical you guys are understand for calculating the designing related to empty weight fraction so guys this is the uh, today topic of uh, the second chapter weight estimation so here we are going to stop the first lecture of weight estimation and i hope so you guys are understand each and every topic and suppose you guys have the problem in some of the mathematical equation you can ask me in the comment box because most of the derivation we are done in the aircraft performance that's the reason i have presented directly and in aircraft design there is no need to derive the equation only we are going to pick up the mathematical equation what we are learned in the aircraft performance and that we are utilizing to represent that parameters with respect to the aircraft performance so i hope so today you guys understand all the topic so guys here we are going to stop and next video i am going to explain the remaining topic of chapter number 2 that is weight estimation so guys thank you so much for watching my this video